going to do another session of painting with Victor or painting with me. So I'm going to do another live painting. I will share as well some of the work I did during this weekend week. So you can see as well what has been my progress on the, well, the Geller, Geller box and Infector are uh, already finished. And now we are going to start uh, basing and preparing the base and start painting the Warman of the Edoneth for Warhammer Underworlds. So I hope you have a great time. And now let me just set up here as usual the YouTube. So to see I'm, to ensure I'm there, I'm live. Yes, here I am. Yeah, sorry that the camera is in the way, but it's the only way for me to, to see what I'm... I just set up everything and trying to put the phone in a place that I can see it. Although the chat here is working quite well. Let me just uh, change this to chat. And now we are going to change the camera and go on the table as usual, what I like to do during these sessions. Just put the logic and then let's see if you can see this correctly. Let me know if there is any problem. Maybe I need to zoom in a little bit more. Let me know what, what do you see. But I think should be okay. So I'm preparing the bases first. I like to do all the basing. And then once the basing is done, we are going to work on the miniatures itself. So this is how I'm doing these bases. So this zone with uh, some, um, I, I use pigments for the um, most part of the base. And now I'm going to start doing all the details that we see here on the base. Uh, let me put this like that, and I think should be okay. Should be okay. The whole looks like from there. Uh, I think it's okay. So let me just keep working on the base. Uh, you can see my white palette is still closed. I'm not. I'm. I'm using at this stage mainly contrast paint. Well, we, here we are going to do uh, use one that is not contrast, and I'm using not. I'm not using the best brushes for that part. So. Um, what has been done up to now? So this is uh, I use one of the uh, I did I applied one of the what is one? You know, which I know was this dark sand color. This one powder. I will find it one day. Here it is. I have applied this pigment with water. Hi, good night, SX. Thanks a lot for joining. Good evening. So I have applied this on the base, and then once this dries to fix it, I did a wash of seraphine sepia on top, and I think it gives a very nice texture. So this will, will look like once you have done these two steps, okay? So just before doing the details. I, I like wh quite how it's looking like. There is one here, there was a lot of accumulation there, and there is some cracking. I'm not concerned, and I don't think it's, it's going to be look too bad. Um, okay, you see also the base on the, on the, I can, I did not really pin it um, very strongly, so you can see how the bases are looking like, okay? So this is before doing the stones and everything. And, and then I just use a uh, regular paint for the stone. This is a contrast orange, very interesting, give a very nice uh, orangey. Yeah, I'm doing well, I'm doing well. I hope the same for you, uh, Essex. I hope you're doing as well, well. And yeah, I just want to do here uh, a little bit of time. I change a little bit again, uh, trying to find the setup of the camera. But I think now it's going to be better. Maybe it's, if it's too far, let me know and I will zoom in. But I think it should be OK like that. Uh, and I'm going to work mainly. So let me show first what I have done. OK, so you, I can show you the work I have been finishing. I will do pictures soon, and I will do all my typical showcases in the channel. But I finalize the leader of the Geller box. Okay. This is how it looks like. Let me see if I can go closer. But I don't know if this will. So this is how the leader of the Geller box looks like. The skin. The light is not the best here. Maybe I can put some more light. Okay, now I think it's better. Okay. And this is the uh, uh, the tongue. I wanted to go for some crazy pink tongue. 
I, I enjoy I really enjoyed painting this guy. I think it's it's a very it's it's a fun to paint this. I enjoy painting the Geller Fox guys. I'm not sure if I have shared this before, but this is the, the calamar guy or the squid guy. Okay, oh, well, it's an octopus. Because the octopus looks like I play a lot with the varnishing to give these finishings. These are the ones I use. Okay. So different tones of skin with purples, pinkish colors. This is the one I use for the skin tutorial. Okay, I'm really I, I really enjoy painting this warband. These are the worms. Okay, uh, it's quite it is quite a small miniature. Okay, this is quite a fast paint job. I just paint all the worms today. They are quite fast to paint. And with contrast paints, I, I accelerate quite a lot the paint jobs. Another worm, I use um, impact glue to make the, the slimes and the... Thanks a lot, SX. Thanks a lot for the kind comments. Uh, they're really... They're really nice miniatures to paint. I really enjoyed painting this Geller Fox. You have a little bit of everything. I will. I, I'm not sure. Oh, this is the one that, the one that is um, puking. I use the technical paint of um, it's called Nargel Rot or Nargel, the one that is the green technical paint. I use it a lot. Uh, I also paint, of course, these guys. This is why that they look like insects. Some greens, they did two green and two blue, like this one. Okay. So if you want to, these are, I, I really hope they put rules and they relaunch these war bands because they have a lot of character and I think it's a, it's a miss if they don't put rules for them, for the, the new kill team, because they are really nice and um, they are really interesting to paint. I really enjoyed. Uh, I did also doing worms and then I did well, this. I, I tried to do this very nasty one. Let me see if I can. So, uh, let me see. This try I, I try to do here. It's pinkish with a lot of slime. As well, I use the impact glue to make. I don't know if the camera can catch the slimy thing of the glue, but I also played. And you can see this is a darker one here on the base. Is because I I mix glue as well with paint to make. Other types of slime. I really enjoy it. It's it's. I think these are nice, interesting miniatures to mess up and to to play around. These are the Norglins that they were not. They are not called Norglins either. Called, I don't remember the name. They're called in a different name, but in principle they are Norglins with metallic head. Thanks a lot, uh, Meowi. Thanks a lot for joining as well. Thank you very much. So, and I, this is my favorite one. The ones that are two together. They're very bizarre, most of them, okay? These are really mm, bizarre Nargal. And I think I, I paint from Nargal, I think I paint almost all type of miniatures. I, I think I'm only missing the great unclean one, the new great unclean one, because I paint, I paint some of the old ones. And to be fair, um, I, I paint box walkers. I, I paint almost everything from Norgo, a little bit of everything. And to be fair, this is the one, maybe the ones that I enjoy the most, because there is so much variation between the mi different miniatures that you really uh, 
you really enjoy the variety. And now, after painting all this nastiness, we are going to go for these guys. I was holding this this one for this um, Edonet. So I still thinking I need to think about the color scheme. I'm not fully clear about the color scheme. I, I'm I think I will go for um, turquoise blues. I think and maybe combine with some orange or something like that. But first I want to do the bases. And this is the first base I'm painting. Okay. Let's see if I can. And I'm, I'm playing with contrast. So what I'm going to use now, for example, here on the on the clam, I will use Agarus Dunes to make a first shading. And I have to say contrast they can be a little bit expensive, but they are great paints. I, I, as if you want to, I think for me, they, they work perfectly. You can use them as a wash if you thin down. You can use them as a glaze. Or here, just. Okay, I will do. I will try. And then you can see if I dry my brush, I can even remove some paint and make it lighter. You can play a lot with intensity just by removing or, or adding. Okay. And now what I will do, I will even create like a gradient using the snake by ladder. This carbon core. Zygor. I need to put some order here. Actually, with the camera in front, it's more difficult to find the paints. Sorry, I cannot find the snake bite leather. Ay, ay, ay. Here it is. What I will do, I will do something like that. And now, when you brush is starting, having less load pain, I try to go a little bit up. Now I will do a second layer, just at the edge. The end the clams, well, it depends a lot on the on the type of clam, right? They can be greenish, they can be brown, they can be any color that you like. But I find interesting to do it like that. And now drawing almost my brush, removing almost all the paint, and doing and to a little bit like that. You can even make a second band. Some of them have two bands of darker color. So we can do here a second band. And now I will just clean my brush almost. I do like that. And we can leave the cam like that. Then we have the barnacles uh, that we also need to do into some wash. But first, I will do this pottery there. And for that, the case that is not fair to use more from brown, I want to go for white clay lock. I guess the strangely beautiful is for the. For the Norgal guys, yeah, you know my wife. The favorite, the favorite faction or the favorite miniatures I paint for my wife are the Norgal. So she likes that they are so bizarre. So 
So looking for XV, as it seems that today is going to be one of these days I cannot find the paints. Looking for the Moore from Brown. If I don't put them in the right place. So let's see this is not more fun. This is more fun brown. Okay, we'll use this. I need to put it in the palette. I'm running out of space in this palette already. Let's just put some there. We're going to paint this type of thing. We're going to do some in like if they are made of clay and some in metallic depending on the on the miniature. So to give there is a lot of garbage on this on, on this uh, C because yeah there is A lot of debris here. I guess they want to make the base more interesting. They really accumulate a lot, a lot of debris. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what the thing on the here it is. They look like rocks i will paint them like rocks with barnacles on that, on that so i will this base i will just do this one and i will leave the other ones in metallic because this looks like a yeah like a gobbet Love it, and then I will paint it in metallics. And this looks like a, a tray. Maybe it's a tray, or a, I don't know if it's a like a door. I don't know. Have here like a hinge. I don't know what is that. But I will paint it as well in metallic colors. And when I say metallic, I want to go for bronze. I think they will look interesting here. There. Such as like that. So this Ethernets are bringing the sea garbage with them. The sea debris. Let's paint here. We have another like. Jar or here, I don't know really the words in English for all these things. Okay, we can also do this part in metallic, like if it's, I don't know if they try to be. Covet or let's put them in because this will go in the metallics. Well, so I guess they're working on a broke, um, yeah, broken city. I mean, flooded city. Another one, and then I, I think to do a tutorial on the crab, another one on the fish, and another one on one of the idonets. It's one of the war ones where each minute is more different, and it's very, they are, it's quite an interesting take. And the fish is almost a token because it's you have a very curious rules. So. And uh, let's maybe talk a little bit about 
the gen continues. So we have seen, yeah, now that I'm bending Warhammer on the walls, that the new season is coming. Yes, well, let's talk about the corn. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I have seen the new the new blue ball corn team. And I'm thinking to pick it up when it's appearing, maybe, or at the beginning of next year. I really like it. I like a lot the corn goals. I like them a lot. The Marauders and the and the, well, the Berserkers or the they are very they, they are so the Marauders they look a lot like the um, Blood Rivers. Okay, I know that they are from a different they are in different worlds, but I guess they, they take some of the aesthetics. And the other ones look like the Warriors, the Block Warriors, or the but I think they look nice. I think they are nice miniatures. And it still like, can be quite fun to play it. So, yeah, I like the deck. I guess this will not match with the all rules for this team. Okay, there were, uh, there were some rules that are, were not official, I think, the rules for corn, the corn team, at least not recently. So they will not. They are quite different because I, I think in the past they were the 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 corn warriors and then the blood sister, but I can understand that you cannot put a blood sister in blood ball, so it was a a small blood sister. So it's it's interesting. And I guess I'm wondering when they do the if they will be able to have a minotaur, because I will expect that they will be able to have a Minotaur, I guess. And what type of if they release some new star players just for corn? So I was not I was not expecting the corn team to come. But for me, it's it's interesting. It's an interesting team as well. And I like them. Of course, not too many choices to paint these guys, right? You will go all red or red almost. Or red or black, you can go to black if you want it. You can go maybe bone instead of red if you want to to, to collect bones. But I think, but I was a was a good surprise for me. Yes, yes, I I think it's good. I think it's good that they're bringing new teams and new. I also like it. I also like it that we see new teams. So no, that have divided this whole day. So we can do. Even if you want to go darker, no, that they have divided. I will take Zygor Brown, that is even darker, and I will mm, I increase the density on these bands. So, and then I also like, I, I know that not everybody like it, but I, I also like the new box of Warhammer Underworlds. I would like to see more of this Stormcast in the, in the main army. I really like a lot the one that is hooded. Okay, so this whole looks like no day. Yeah, new Amazon will be great. It will be all, yeah, I will love them as well. I'm loving every day more and more um, Blue Ball. And I was not planning to do too many teams on Blue Ball, but every day I'm more, yeah, I'm, I'm more hooked, or I would say more attracted. No more, and they are feeling more and more to me. And maybe it's also because we played here as a family. And I enjoyed, I enjoy a lot the new Blue Ball. And I, I don't know if you have seen, but I also tried Blue Ball 7. And maybe it's the format I will need to use in the future with my kids. Because it's in, in one hour, even in less time, you can do a game. And it thinks it's better for 
if you don't want to spend that much time on, on a game. So I really enjoyed the, and then here I will, I will just go over with the Agavax Earthshade. So I really enjoyed playing the, the Blue Ball 7. Of course, it's more, it's faster, but it keeps the brutality and the fun of the, of the Blue Ball. So if you don't have too much time or you try to, it's not Blue Ball, so don't teach Blue Ball. So I mean, the mechanics are the same, right? But the tactics and how it plays, how it plays is completely different. So you have to be careful with that if you want to teach someone for, for the big blue ball. But uh, on the other side, the the rules, just put in the card to see how I have to paint this. Oops. We'll go for this. I'm using the racker place for the stones. And then with one, so I want them to be quite light. So yeah, I'm quite excited for that. And then I'm also excited for the Warhammer Underworlds. Yeah, I recommend, it's it's fun, it's fun. Um, uh, the Blue Ball 7. I played my very old team of Chaos Chosen, well, it was a very old miniatures, but I just painted them recently. So it's the last team I painted but are the oldest miniatures together with my orcs that I have in my collection. So they are from the, was the second or the third edition? The one that was, I think it was the third edition. So uh, I play with, with the Chaos Chosen against the Black Orcs. And the game was, I, I, uh, was two to one, so the kill chosen did two points and the black orcs one point. And it's quite fast. You play six rounds instead of eight per part. The field is smaller and you don't start in contact. Okay, so the first movements are approaching. So you start with some distance between the two teams. So it's, it's, it's a different way to deploy. The tactics are different. The mechanics are the same. So I really enjoy it. OK, let's do the stones on all the bases. Here I well, I can make this one metallic, for example. So there's a lot, as I'll tell you, there is a lot of debris on this underwater. Uh, so, and then we have seen the new, uh, the Sororitas. Yeah. This has been, it's, this is killing me because we also have seen the new kill team for the Sodoritas, okay? And I also like them, but yeah, I have to, I, I'm still thinking if I want to go or not for the, for the uh, kill team. Because there is a moment that you cannot do that much. Maybe I, if I, if I go for, uh, if I buy something in kill team, any warband will be this the the this uh, novit high of the cell of the cellulitas. I think they are very different from the other ones. But to be fair, I have too many meters on my pile of shame, so I need to be a little bit choiceful as well. So I cannot go for everything. This is why not, I did not buy the starter set of the of the kill team. 2.0. So I want to paint. I have three warbands missing to have season four 
the, because at the end c over four is eight plus two, right? Because you have the two bar war bands of the addition of the I will say a starter kit for new people, right? And I have them here that are mainly the condemners. Okay, so these are the castigators and the the pure wraith creeper. But to be fair, I play them a lot on Warhammer online, but no, I don't know who is who, who is who. It's difficult for me. I think this is the leader. I think this is the leader, the one with the gate. This is the other one with four wounds, that is the bummer. And then these two differentiate these two, it's a challenge. Ah, this is the, the one with the crow. Okay, so you have to use all this. You use the peripheric elements more than the miniature itself to differentiate them. Okay, so this will be the, I think, in, I, I, I want to test them on the real game because on online they are very strong. They're a little bit too overpowered. So. So, but looking forward, so. I, I was hesitating if there will be a, a season five or not. I remember that I was told that there will not be see, that the season three was the last one. But I think if Games Workshop is making money, they will keep releasing seasons, right? There is no reason to stop if you make money. So let's see how this evolves. Warhammer Underworlds. But each season have more and more miniatures. I think there is the, the, each season have more warbands, more expansions, because now we on top we have Arena, Mortis, that we have it as well on Beast Grave. And I'm wondering what they will do in season five, if they will also release 10 warbands or just the eight as they used to be in the first seasons. So here on on the this is, ah this is here the is a this is a crab well, how it's called this in, in English it's one of these crabs that are stealing so let's put some right there so I, I don't forget about him or this one I think I, I put this one to be exactly still. I don't forget him later on. It's not that easy to see. This is another curious thing. A lot of these animals are not really red when they are alive. They are red when you boil them to eat. But yeah, if I do everything in, in very soft colors, it's going to be difficult. So now I'm going to use this bronze, but I don't like to put it on the white palette, so I will put it on a regular palette. But, sorry, I moved the camera. Hermit crab, yes, it's a hermit crab. This is the name. You are right. Yeah. Yeah, the sisters looks like an interesting team. So I need to see. Depending how I am advanced, how I'm with my pile of shame, I will or not go for them. So Let's do these runes. Let's put some water. It's very thick, this paint. I 
I will put bronze, then I will do a brush with a much lighter color, and we are going to end up putting uh, some nihilid oxide to make them look that it's been rust. Under the sea, metal does not have this type of things, will not have too much opportunities. I'm still wondering what is this supposed to be? I guess it's like a tray with a cover. You know, these food trays that you put the food inside and you have like a cover, maybe? I don't know. Because it's, it's like two pieces, right? You have here the hinges. And I prefer not to do glass the base because I want the base I like it to do not to use too complicated techniques. So let's go like that. This one does not have anything in metal. Just Thinning down a little bit more the pain. This I don't know what is supposed to be. It's a column. I don't know. I will paint if it's like a big object. It's broken under the sea in was made of bronze. Maybe it was supposed to be stone, but okay. Yeah, I guess it was supposed. Maybe I, I will do one thing. I will do like if it's bronze. It's a it's stone, but covered in with bronze. Mm. Yeah, bronze. Um, Sheets, right? Bronze covers, lower bronze coating, or something like that. So, and then we do this thing here. One thing you have to be careful because here I, I just, when you use powders, is you will need to fix them. Okay, here. I use a wash on top to help to fix it. Then you can use varnish, or you can use there is a um, yeah like a solvents to to fix the powders. Even um, sometimes the mediums also can fix them, but fix them because if not, you it will keep falling and dirtying. All each time that you are touching it. Because they are designed not to fix alone, so you need to use something to fix the powders on the miniature. And they are designed in that way, so you can remove them, so that there are techniques to apply them and then remove it to help you out. Okay, wipe it on. Let's do this shield. So now it's going to be 
long weeks and short weekends for me. Because Saturday morning, my son is doing Spanish. From in the morning, so we need to be at nine, meaning that I only have really one night to stay late. So I cannot stay that late Friday night if I need to wake up at 7 on Saturday. So I mean that I am limited to do the live shows on Saturdays. So I will try to do them as much as I can every Saturday if I'm not too tired. Also means that I cannot be, I will be about one hour more likely painting every Saturday, if I'm still longer, I will be too tired. There we go. I like this bronze color from model color of Vallejo. Okay. So I think Vallejo has some interesting colors as well. And yeah, I like to when a color is not in one lineup of paints or for one in one company, then it's good to look for alternative in other companies. I will do as well here this this is stone, so we can remove this one here. So I don't I think these are stones with barnacles. It's curious that they are so rounded. One of the advantage of the push filmators is that some parts you can assemble and disassemble to help to paint, right? And you have seen me do that on other miniatures. You don't push it to the end, you just, so you can disassemble them. Have a drizzle there. Okay, let's read the device. Here I will need to do a little bit of highlight on some parts. So I will take now both around and Bendley Brown to highlight the wood. I'm very excited about the new kill team. So the you're meaning the the sisters against town? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Isaac, that you enjoy that. And I enjoy doing that. It's a good relaxing moment for the weekend for me as well. So my intention is to keep doing them. But I cannot avoid being late. So also is the family moment. And the kids also go to bed later because it's weekend. So everything goes a little bit later on Saturdays.
Okay. Spring some more water on the bin light brown. I need to start changing the paper and clean the sponge on my wet palette. It's a little bit too thin, eh? but I won't manage to make it work with the right. Okay, we go around. So we do this one here. No, I'm focus that, sorry if I'm not talking too much. And I'm doing something that requires a lot of concentration. Sometimes I'm so focused that I forgot to keep commenting. I have, I'm excited about the teams they could release on the new memes. Yeah, yeah, I I think if they take, uh, I'm, I'm with you, um, Melwi. If they are following these ideas of making these specialized skill teams, they can make very interesting things. In fact, I want to put a video, because I, I, I did a review of the compendium, and is in part is giving us well this opinion. So I want to put this video tomorrow talking about the compendium and about the future of Kill Team 2.0 because it looks after the reveals in in, in the Gen Con. I was I was thinking that they will do that when I saw the the 2.0 starter set. Right? That they will start creating more specialized teams and dedicated um, to Kill Team, right? Not just and reusing the the Warhammer, the big the big armies from Warhammer 40k, and I think it makes more sense to have something more specific with a more concrete, really kill team, right? Where um, you have specialized people in the team. So I like this idea, and I think they can make very interesting things. So a lot of people, yeah, some people don't like the new sisters, but I really like them. So yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering if they will release the, the rules. The only thing that it's making me think is if they will release the rules at the end for the different kill teams apart, or if you will need, if you will be forced to buy each box to have the rules, right? Because I will not buy the box to have the rules. But I would like to see the rules of different teams. So I'm wondering how they will manage this part. It's the only thing that I'm, I, I would like to see a little bit more clarity on there. But so far what I see, or if they will do a compendium later on with all the different warbands, this will be great with all the different kill teams. I can understand that no, they want to put, they want to sell boxes, but I'm wondering what they will do in the future for these skill teams. But I think it's a great idea, that idea that uh, every kill team has its own personality. And and I think it's, yeah, it makes the kill teams more interesting. Now I'm using to highlight that, that's Cloud Brown. Okay, and then if I see that it's too light, put them over here, I mix it with more from brown. Hmm. 
And if I go to seek on the HKM line, I come back with a previous color and I thin them down. Okay. I haven't made a video for my YouTube channel for over a month. I have been too busy working and watching others. Well, it's, and I think it also depends on the mood, right? I think you have to do, if you have the, the, mood, the right mood and the, and the enthusiasm to do it. And it's, yeah. I mean, if you are not in the mood, or you, it's, it's a hobby, right? So do it at you when you feel it and that you want to do it. Yeah, it will take time. Yeah, going back to kill team, it, it will take time, of course, to release them all. But as far as you have the compendium, so you can use the compendium kill teams. I think it's good. It, they, I think they say that they will release um, one of these boxes every three months. But I don't know if this is official or not. So meaning we are going to have two warbands every three months. So on a year, we will have eight warbands. More or less similar to how Underworlds started. And now in Underworld, we have uh, an amount of, amount of, of warbands, right? So we have a very wide range of miniatures. So, if they manage to keep the interest of the people and, and keep releasing warbands, this will be interesting. Uh, the only thing I don't, uh, I still don't, I don't know, is that they release them in these big boxes that will be about 150 euros, right? I guess it's, it's close to 200 dollars or something like that, or 170 dollars, or I don't know how it's in, but it's quite expensive in ones right it's easier to swallow if you release just the war for 50 for 40 euros or something like that and you are not forced to co to buy each time the full set i said they will release now the, the first two war from from the first starter box so wondering at what price they will put them out and this will tell you how successful will be this um this warhammer uh, underworlds here we will need to use green stuff. This guy, I had a lot of pain to manage to assemble and it's not easy. So I will use some green stuff to cover some of the gaps. So the other thing that is interesting is that they didn't start with the Space Marines. So at least they, they decided to go for other factions, but they have one of the important ones that is now, since the Sisters of Battle is, is really in the focus of Grange Workshop. Okay. I've been, I, I had Sisters of Battle for a long, long time. But I like to, to see that they are not putting some effort on them as long after not being updated for a lot of years. Let me see if I can very divide this. The green stuff can be made softer using they will need to take it out from here and play with it a little bit with water. Again, I put it on a pallet, on, on a plastic or somewhere where you can add water and manipulate it a little bit. As you see, it's super dry. Still, they did not manage to make 
to make our tight pots in the washer. And let's take some water with the pipette. Oops, if I can thin it down, not with this right, of course, with the bad one. No, you can see when no you want to thin all these clumps. Okay, and now let's put it there. Especially in the skin, you want to, you don't want to have gaps, right? So these are quite natural. Okay. So maybe you have only to do two layers. They want to avoid. to clog the tails, right? So you want to be careful there. There's this part. Uh, it's late. I'm, I'm so I will go sleep now. Good night. Yeah, good night, Maui. And thanks a lot for joining. So. Yeah, thanks to you for joining and yeah, I'm looking forward if you can join next weekend. So I will be, we'll see if I can start a little bit earlier. But it's difficult for me to start earlier. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, cleaning the pots is also something that I'm, I'm lazy to do. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that he's lazy and not lazy. But I was thinking my English is not that good, no? Yeah, but from that time it's good, it's good to clean them because um, you preserve the paint fresh for longer. So if you can, if, I think it's important if you can clean them from time to time. Because you, you, will, you will keep the, your paint in a good shape for a longer time. So let's put here some washers. And the rising is quite late here in Belgium. It's one o'clock, one, one twenty almost. I guess I will do the same on these rods because I think they look too light. Okay. And now I will put it on the pottery. If I have to talk about two type of tools, things that make me to improve a lot on painting, or to help me a lot, some things that I, I will not imagine to to not have them today. One is the washers, and the other ones are the contour paints. I think are the two best things that I get from Gage Workshop. I really love them. The contours and the washers. I think when when the first time they released the contours, because I was using before they had the inks. They were very bad. They were giving this glossiness. I was not fan of the inks that they were they were having. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot of time consuming to clean all these leads, 
and all the pain that goes into the, there, yeah, it's, it's a pain. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. It feels that like you are losing your time with that. I agree that it's not what you want to do. If you have limited time for hobby, it's not what you want to do. Start cleaning pots. I fully agree with you. Since uh, the other thing is, since I, I'm using more of the wet palette, they get less dirty because I don't keep the 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 lid open that long. Okay. So the wet palette is help is helping me there. So we have no. I will apply some of this. So I will. Put there some washes, so I will put that if it's a very clear stone underneath. Imagine that is like part of a building that was stone covered with bronze. This one we need to go. The wash on. Do the wash in two parts on this. And as well on the Hermitage crab. And here. The stars I wanted to go for quite the saturated color, so this way we have ones that are orange and all red, but I did not want to have a super light for color. I want to go more for some a little bit desaturated. Yeah, yeah, I also like them a lot. I'm thinking if I will go with contrast, I can do an experiment here. Let's do an experiment. What happens if I use the ethereal blue on this gold? A thermatic blue, sorry. If I screw up, I paint it on top. But I think this is what I wanted. You can see, very interesting. So you have no this look that this is the look I was looking for. This bluish, rusted looking, but darker than the nihilite, nihilite um, blue. I think I will leave it like that. I think I will leave it like that. What do you think? Let's like it. Let's let it dry. But I think it look it will look good. Then on top you can do another wash of brown to make them less lifeful. I will with the device and I want to see how it looks like. I'm almost here. Yeah. Now I need to think how I want to paint this guy. Which colors I want to use for these guys. And I don't want to glue because I need to do the likes first. They have like where the woods are starting and finishing, these are woods or these are, I think they, they are not woods. So the armor, I know what I want to do. I want to do, I'm thinking to do 
blue armor, silver with the thermatic blue can look quite interesting as well for the armor plates. And I think I will go thinking here, sorry, I'm just looking at the miniature and talking, but I'm thinking about the color scheme. Yeah, I'm looking and no waiting. This is how it looks like. So maybe I should do another weekly on that. I will let it dry and see how it looks like. And sometimes you need to experiment. And the thermatic blue is not that good on other colors. So I wanted to go, let me see if I go for Do we test this color, this turquoise? But if I play everything in blue, it's going to be quite, let's see. How this blue looks like. So very, this paint is super thin, and I will need two layers to have a good coverage. But I can survive with that. I think I will apply then a wash. Or maybe I will apply a thermatic blue directly on top to make to make it darker. But with this underneath we'll have good intensity. The thermatic blue, the problem I have with it is that it's very translucent. But if I have a good base of a blue, of a very light blue like this one, underneath it can work. Then the problem if I do that, then my armor will look too similar to this. But the armor, I'm thinking if I will do the same as the ones similar to these ones, so now I'm hesitating how to do. So yeah, this guy will be my experimenting guy. I always like on these war ones, I like to experiment colors and combinations. Okay. Because if you arrive to something this very complicated. Does not matter, it's a small number of miniatures and it's okay. Okay. But I like to, to not follow just the same colors that the games workshop have painted them. I like to look for my own palette and my own imaginary on, on these miniatures or, or on the paint job. So this is why I'm looking always for new color combinations. I think makes makes your armies more personal. Especially when we talk about war ones. When we if you want to paint like a big army and uh, like is in the flag, then I can understand that you need to follow the color scheme of that army. But when you are talking about this is more war ones, I think it's the moment that we can use to span our imagination. And also the big armies, it depends on what is your concept, right? The other two, the two ideas can be interesting, right? To make something that is very accurate very uh, canon but you can go crazy i think both things can be interesting okay i don't want to go on the skin because i want to wait i want to really be sure that they that the green stuff is divine before doing anything on the skin I need to keep two guys 
I think I will do a tutorial on the leader, on this guy. So I can paint the woman too. Here again. And this is also the same color. I want to, no, I will wait because I want to see how all combined and once I know it, then I will, I will paint the other guys. Let me see because I was waiting at this device, but I think once device it will look good. So I will apply this on all the metallics and I think for today I will finalize. So just, uh, it's quite late and it's moment is a good moment to go to bed. Okay. So I'm just going to put that and do, do it in this metallic parts. At the end, this is a magical wool. So you can have different types of metal, materials. I, we, we know that there are, each realm have their own magical stone. I've been recently very into the background of Age of Sigmar. I was especially on the broken realms. I, I've always been quite, uh, I've always enjoyed quite a lot the background of uh, and the, the of Age of Sigmar and, uh, and the 40 games as well. Okay. But I've been quite following on, on the background of Age of Sigmar recently and it's quite, quite complete, quite interesting and quite complex. So I, it's really, there is really a good job there. Eh? And they managed to put on broken realms, they manage almost to, to make something for every faction in the game, but it's great because you, you want to see your faction to do something on the background, right? Not just to be there for decoration. Yes, you're right. So uh, I think experimenting on, on the small teams, war ones, it's, it's the way to go. But you always can do a test miniature, and then if you don't like it, you just prime on top or um, strip the paint, right? But the good thing on a, on a small war one or kill team is that you can see on different type of miniatures because what what i want sometimes is that you create a color scheme for example on a basic space marine right it happened to me with i think for when i was painting the the liberators so you create a color scheme and looks great on the liberators and it works perfectly but then it becomes very complex when you have a more complicated miniature a hero or something like that that have more elements and then you need to think to, to adapt the color scheme to a more complex miniature. So most of the time it is okay, but sometimes depending on the color schemes that you choose, yeah, you can be quite limited on what you can do on your heroes. Okay. So, but yeah, but this is the the, the for, for mm -hmm. I, I I love to make my own color schemes. So I think I will finalize here if you don't mind. Um, I'm quite tired and I think it's good for me because if not, I will start doing mistakes and I, I will be pissed off with myself. So this guy will go here on top, on the other way around. And I think I will go for these trousers. I need to see. I hope it's not glossy. If it's glossy, I will change the paint completely. But I hope it's not glossy paint at the end. And yeah, and that's all. That's all for now. So I hope you have enjoyed today. Let me just put my the other camera so I can talk to you a little bit. I always mistake. Here it is. Let me just do that. I have the, the other camera in front of my face. Just a little bit. Okay. Let me just move it a little bit. 
So that's all for tonight. I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you like it. Uh, and you had a good time with me and painting these miniatures, as I'm, I'm the same as having a good time painting them. So I really enjoy these sessions. Um, my expectation is to keep doing them. And yeah, more to come. So if you have enjoyed next weekend, I will try to do it more or less at the same time around 12 o'clock, maybe 11.30 if I'm lucky. But that's all. So thanks uh, to the people who have joined. Thanks, X, uh, um, Essex, sorry. Thanks, um, Meowi. I'm really glad that you joined, that you create some conversation. Sometimes, uh, I'm apologizing, sometimes I'm really focused on the meter and I'm not reading the comments very fast. But uh, yeah, but at the end, uh, I hope you have enjoyed on the painting session. That's all for today, as usual. Thanks a lot for watching. And see you again later. Have a good night or good day. Bye.